My short nails are back and we are gonna do all about how to diff your nails when they're really short. What's up nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. I chopped all my nails off and that's gonna be a whole nother video to explain what happened. But today is all about the short nails and how to dip them. When you're dipping on your natural nails, you wanna make sure when they're really short that you do some kind of either layer of dip base over your entire nail or do clear as your base. The reason being when your nails are really short, I feel like it's harder for the dip to always adhere. Some people have a little bit of trouble when their nails are short. So two of my tricks are to apply clear over your entire nail as the first layer, or to do a layer of dip base, a really thin layer, and then let it fully dry. If your nails are super short, and you, but you'd still like to build a little bit of an apex, you can do a layer of dip base of your entire nail, let it dry, and then do like one strip of clear dip powder through the center to give you that little bit of oomph for an apex. So what you wanna start off doing when your nails are short, you don't have to build an apex. So I do have a tiny, tiny bit of builder gel left on my natural nails. It's basically nothing. So I'm almost dipping over my natural nails. So I did use peel base, and then I did a layer of dip base over my entire nail. Now I'm going to make sure that my layers are applied really, really thinly. So that's key no matter what your nail length is, but especially if your nails are super short, it is so important to keep your dip base really thin and your layers really thin. It's gonna be better to do more layers that are thin than less layers that are thick, particularly if you have short nails, because you definitely don't want your nails to look like, uh, as my friend Ashley calls them, little chiclets. <laughs> so one thing that really helps me when I'm doing shimmers and solids is to pour the powder over this color the two colors that I'm using today are truly madly deeply is this chrome shimmer and then the other one that I'm going to be using the glitter is called you're still the one I am so all about this these two colors these two colors uh, are officially like my favorite new colors I will definitely be wearing Truly Madly Deeply again. I mean, it's this stunning rose gold type chrome that's also the chrome shimmer. I mean, come on. Like, even if you don't like pinks, this has to be your jam. Okay, oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna maybe make everybody, <laughs> make everybody love pinks too. Something else that really helps me when my nails are short to get close to the sides. I feel like when my nails are short and I need to get close to the sides of my nails, it helps to pull my skin down because then I'm not flooding my cuticles. So always pushing your nails back before you even start the dip. And then if you need to pull the sides of your nails down a little bit, as you're applying the dip base, that'll all help you get your dip really close to your skin without flooding it. Since I'm going to be doing some glitters in this Manny, I like to make sure I do my last layer of clear dip powder and activate those nails before I go in with my glitter. I'm a really messy dipper. I'm trying in 2024 not to be such a messy dipper. I'm trying to like make things a little bit different this year, be more aesthetic, like feel really good about certain things that I am doing. So if you notice in the background of my videos, I'm now trying to do a little bit more aesthetic for you guys. And you know what, for myself, I have this new little wax melter that I'm gonna have going too, so that my nail room smells nice. I don't know, just like little things that I'm trying to do for myself to just kind of change things up and make me feel good. But anyway, since I am a messy dipper, you want to make sure like I do that you do your last layer of clear over all of your solid or shimmer nails and activate it before you go in and apply your glitters. This is going to protect your solids and your shimmers from getting contaminated with glitters. If you are somebody who likes to leave all of your powders open and out, there is much more of a chance that you're going to contaminate your solids and your shimmers if you don't put the clear dip powder over first and then activate it. When I activate my nails, I like to do two passes of it. So I dunk my brush in the activator, apply it all over my nail, dunk it back in, and then apply it all over my nail again. This makes sure that the activator gets to get the entire way through your dip liquids and powders. Since I'm doing a color block design on my middle nail, I don't go through and put clear over that and activate it since there's going to be glitter on the other half of the nail and anytime i'm using a mini chunk glitter like the one i'm doing in this video i skip the tape on my nail 
I skip putting the tape on my nail for the color blocking. You don't have to use tape if you're not a perfectionist and you like a simple color block that doesn't have to be perfect. When you're using glitter, a little bit of it can get over the line of like your color block and it still ends up looking really good. It's like a cross between a super straight color block and an ombre. Since you're not ombreing it, you're just putting it right along the side there. That's actually like one of my favorite easy color blocks to do where you don't have to use use tape because you're using a glitter on the other half you just use that glitter to make the line and then it's not the line for the color block doesn't have to be perfect so let's talk about some tips for when you're using glitters with really short nails a key to getting the glitters not to look super chunky is to apply your liquids really thin so I make sure I wipe off a majority of my dip base on the inside of my brush before I apply it to my nail <clears throat> with mini chunk I try to make sure that I get a decent amount of mini chunks on both dips because they usually sit like much flatter than a real chunky glitter so it's okay if you get more of the ch more of the mini chunks on both dips but you always see me for the second dip no matter what kind of glitter I'm using I always make sure I shake my glitter up really well because that's going to bring the pieces up to the top that you want showing on the top of your nail so that when you lay your nail flat all those pieces are going into the right place I am a huge proponent of pouring your glitter into some kind of like either dip cup like the one I'm using. Uh, this one's from SJ3 Designs. I swear by them now and like I literally can't do my mayonnaise without them because I would make such a big mess when I was using the cupcake liners. I just knock them over a lot easier. Um, like I said, I'm really messy. So the cupcake liners just knocked over way easier. But if you don't have the dip cups, you absolutely can use the cupcake liners. I would recommend doing the smaller cupcake liners because the bigger ones for me for some reason just tended to like fly all over the place you want to make sure after you lay your nail you want to take a piece of tape like so you can use painters tape washi tape um, I'm trying to think of what else painters washi like masking tape anything like that I put a little piece on my middle finger of the other hand that's not being dipped on and then just gently press it down you don't want to get any dip powder any dip liquid stuck on your skin then it's harder to get off and your skin can get irritated and itchy it's called contact dermatitis from getting powders or liquids on them too much so I try to be really careful plus like I don't want to have to be scraping dip powder um, off my nails whether it's glitter powder or whatever once you've pressed the glitters down a little bit that's when you want to first start to make sure they're like laying flat and you can take a pointy nail tool and trace around your cuticles so none of those glitters get stuck in your cuticles I do that for every single kind of dip powder I'm using whether it's solid shimmers glitter flakes foils whatever tracing around my cuticles after each dip is going to ensure that you're not getting anything stuck on them so if you're somebody who likes to wear your dip mani for a while the more you get stuck on your skin the more likely you're going to be to get lifting of your dip nails you definitely don't want that so that you can wear your dip manis as long as possible now i do have peel base on my manis to start so i typically wear mine about four to six days um recently i have been really wanting to use like all these valentines and colors that i have right now and all these pinks so i've actually been doing my nails like every three or four days which is not typical for me anymore I'm typically more in like the four to six day range uh, even with peel base I usually try to take them off around like maybe the fifth day or the sixth day so once you've gotten your glitters applied to your nail you want to go back through and really really press them down the nice thing about mini chunky glitters with short nails is they typically lay really flat so you're not going to have super thick chunky nails if you're using like a mini chunk versus like a really thick chunky glitter and then I'll do a layer of clear dip powder over my entire nail. And since I'm using glitters, I either press it down or keep pouring over the clear dip powder until it's totally soaked in. Either pour it in or, you know, this one, I actually decide just like lay my nail flat onto the clear. Um, I didn't have many of my dip cups clean left, so I knew I needed some for my right hand. So I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll just lay my nail flat into the clear dip powder. And if you press it down, that also helps to make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies. Or if you keep pouring it over till all the liquid is soaked up, that'll really get it in there. And the nice thing about using a crystal clear, clear dip powder is that it fills in all the little gaps that you might have after you applied your glitter powder. So I do that 
with the clear regardless of whether my nails are short or long it's just like a little trick i've learned that helps me then when you're buffing your glitters they just look so beautifully smooth and there's not any lumps and bumps on them because the clear dip powder has filled in all those little nooks and crannies i feel like i say nooks and crannies a lot i don't know why it's like one of my favorite sayings uh, that and like oh sugar and son of a nutcracker well a lot of other choice words that i keep off my video <laughs> So once you finish applying your clear dip powder, make sure you brush it off really well. That's going to keep your nails from being too thick. If you're using a clear dip powder that's not crystal clear like the one I'm using, you definitely want to brush it off really, really well. And you can apply your activator over the other nails that didn't get activator on them. Wait till the activator hardens those nails. Then you can go with your buffing, shaping, and filing. You have to be careful when you're using glitters because if you file and buff too hard, you can actually buff some of the glitter away and it like, turns it silver, which you definitely don't want. You don't want to mess up your glitter colors that they don't look the color that they actually are and they turn silverish. If this video has you all excited to dip, but you know you need more help than just watching videos, make sure you check out the first pinned comment. It has a link to my Dip Nails 101 guide. It is the ultimate guide to dipping your nails at home. Over 45 pages of everything from prep to application to removal, all the tips and tricks that I have learned over the past four and a half years, absolutely no gatekeeping. So make sure you check that out. Now we're gonna jump back into top coating. I love the top coating process of the Manny because then you get to see how your colors are gonna look at the end, which some like, yes, I'm almost done with my nails too. Once you finish with your buffing and shaping and filing, you want to clean off your nails with isopropyl alcohol. You can either use a lint-free wipe or put some alcohol on a stiff nail brush like I did and then brush downwards to make sure that you don't have any dust on your nails, so that they're nice and clean before you go in top coat. Definitely follow the instructions that came with your dip liquids for the top coating process. All top coats for dip liquids are a little bit different in their timing, so you don't want to use one, one company's dip top coating process for another because it might not turn out as shiny so the ones that i'm using from og dip powder you want to do heavy activator on five nails which means dunk the brush in to the bottle slob it on your nail then dunk back in slop slop it on that same nail again i mean you don't have to do it sloppy i just <laughs> am sloppy once you get to your pinky you want to count to 10 and then go back to your thumbnail and start applying the first layer of dip top coat in two to three quick even strokes I always make sure that I float the first layer of top coat. That helps your brush from getting contaminated. Once you finish the first layer of top coat on your pinky, go right back to your thumb to do the second layer. Make sure you cap those edges. If you still need more help with dip manis, make sure you check out this next video where I teach you how to get perfect cuticle lines. Thanks for joining me today, Nail Crew.